Welcome back. It's time for your monthly Canadian real estate market update. I'm Justin Conoco. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is where people come to get the insider information, the pros and cons of all the different neighborhoods that you can live in. We have a massive referral network across Canada and people are always calling us asking for the best agents on the planet. We have access to them. So if you're looking to relocate, just let me know. If you're new to the community, I want to know who you are and where you're from. Once a month, we're going to do a draw and send out a gift to a community member. Maybe I'll look in your profile, see something you're passionate about, send you a book or something fun from Amazon, or we'll do a draw for one of the prime hats or something fun. This channel is for the people, by the people. I happen to own a real estate brokerage. I've got my black belt in that business, but I'm not one of those thirsty agents that just tells you whatever you want to hear to get you to sign a contract. I'm a human being with lots of passions that extend beyond real estate. And I feel like our industry hasn't done a good enough job on educating consumers and protecting them. So I want to be a sheepdog. I want to protect you from the wolves, but let's get right into it. So I'm going to share my screen now and... I am going to show you a couple different articles. We're going to dig into some statistics and I'm going to show you some very interesting graphs that may blow your mind. So this is the very first thing I want to share, Inflation Bank of Canada. So their target rate for inflation, which is currently around the 8% mark, their target rate's 3% and they're actually projecting that's going to drop there by 3%. There's some things that have to happen for us to get there. But it's one of the reasons that you're reading the headlines that you're reading and everything's happening so quickly the way that it's happening. The free press also talked about the best values of Canada for real estate. And this article actually goes over some of the different markets to invest in. I think this is a precursor that places like London, Ontario, and some of these secondary markets are turning into primary markets because people are looking for where they can move to where it's a little bit more affordable because they're looking at their five year plans. Also, something that I want to note is in Toronto, the new home sales are plummeting. That's just an indication that there is a shift in the new construction market. I think there was about 5,000 units last month that were canceled. I spoke to an institutional developer yesterday, and they're actually going to be picking up a lot of those projects. So you're going to look at investing with people that have really good balance sheets and really good track records and projects. It makes all the difference in the world who is back in the project and if they need the sales to continue. So let's go over the actual statistics this month before I show you the headline article. Actually, you know what? I will show you the headline article first. Market cools off in June. But keep in mind, market cools off in June is information that's based on the month before. So they release these reports at the end of the month once the sales have been compiled. But think about how a real estate transaction happens. You call me to show you a property. I show you the property. We write the contract. Maybe there's a week or two of conditions. You firm up on the deal. Deals are going to close probably 30 to 60 days later. The data lag is an indicator that you may not know what's happening boots on the ground today because this information is a little bit older. But to break it down, in the London St. Thomas market, you're looking at an increase of 8.9% from 2021 prices. Sounds super confusing because everybody says the market is crashing. Realistically, from February and March, there has been a normalization of pricing. I don't think anybody back then thought that that was realistic prices for that time of year. It was such a crazy seller's market. So that's stabilized from that time frame, but they're still up from last year. Pay attention to the stats that come out in August. That's going to be an indicator of where things are going. May they drop a little bit further, potentially, right? But I think that has a lot to do with the buyer confidence and activity in the marketplace, which we will talk about in a minute. Listings have gone up 17.3%. I find it hilarious that a lot of people had said that, well, see, it wasn't a supply issue. It's just the interest rates. The interest rates increasing have drastically increased the supply. The amount of new listings that are coming to market is one of the reasons why we are now in a buyer's market. A buyer's market is defined as four to seven months of inventory versus a seller's market, which is less than the four months of inventory. So the supply is increasing dramatically. The actual sales activity has dropped 40%. That's a big number to pay attention to. So the physical number of sales has actually dropped significantly. So if you have a property for sale and it's not selling, it may not even be the price. It may be the actual sheer number of people that are out there buying and you're sitting at close to three months of inventory, 13 days on market. Saw an offer, uh, offer last week, 15 offers on a property. So there's a wide scale. I would say when I'm looking at the properties in the residential market, you're probably closer to 38 to 56 days on market and on average two to five price reductions before I'm actually seeing the sale. Elgin County was down actually last year, 17.3%, 56 new listings. So their inventory went up again, sales activity down almost 40%, um, 1.1 months of inventory and an average eight days on market. 
Then if I go to the St. Thomas market, you're 576 up 8.2 down listings, 43% down in actual activity and 2.3 with 15 median days on market. So tracking very consistently to the other markets and Sarnia Lambton up 4.6, 320 new listings, massive increase in inventory and decrease in activity, 0.8 months of inventory, eight days on market. All very important information for you to be looking. So the next set of data I wanted to share with you is InfoSparks. I love the way that they have this site set up. This is a site that we have access to and it's the largest board in Ontario of combined data sets and tracks really well, shows you trend lines. February, 2022, the average price across the board was 875, it's dropped to about 715. So if you think about that as a percentage and the value of your home, think about that equity percentage difference. The number of new listings went up, up, up till May, 17,433 and 16, sorry, 16,364. Could be a combination of different projects getting canceled and a whole bunch of different things, right? Homes for sale. So the actual physical number of homes for sales have increased dramatically. So from December, there was only 2,800 across the entire board, 17,000. So the inventory supply has massively increased. The physical number of sales is dropping. So the buyers that are out there actually buying, there's physically less of them than there were previously. Days on market is increasing. Average days on market is up to 12 now. Months of supply is increasing 2.4 across the board. So after months of supply, we're talking about percentage of original price. So if you listed your house for $100,000 in February 22, you would have gotten 20%-ish more than your list price. Today, you would get less. So if you listed your house for a million, you get $993,000. The percentage of list price was around the exact same things, a little bit higher, meaning if you price your house properly, you're probably going to get a little bit more money. And then you got price per square foot was about $559 per square foot, down to four sixty one. dollars and the actual volume, this is just the actual amount of volume of real estate that traded during that time frame. I wanted to explain a little bit of an opportunity zone for people that are in the market that realize that this is a buyer's market, which is a buyer's opportunity, is if you have a home currently that's $200,000 and it's worth one ninety dollars now, so you have an adjustment of say 5% to the purchase price, the next home that you're going to buy, you're actually going to get a bigger savings. So this is a buying up opportunity for a lot of people where they're buying a larger house at a bigger discount than the one that they're actually selling. Understand you need to be fiscally conservative as to can you actually afford this house? I think people that were flying by to their seat of their pants need to really think hard and get around good people that can give them good advice, not just buy for the sake of buying. Another graph I wanted to share is people that are trying to chase the bottom of the market. So if you had a house that was worth say a million dollars according to the comps and you listed it at 1.2 back in June when this all started happening, all of a sudden, you know, the market's shifting and you realize and you're like, you know what, I'm going to list at a million dollars a month later. Well, the new market may be at 900. So if you listed a million thinking, I could totally get that for my house. That's what it was worth when I listed it. You're chasing the bottom. And this graph explains that very, very well. And it talks about how you're seeing multiple price corrections to get to the final price that a buyer is willing to pay for it versus the time on market. So this is also an interesting graph and explains the correlation between interest rates and home values. Understand that this is a very general graph and every single mortgage is very specific. But if a home price decreases by 5%, so it goes from 200 to 190 and the interest rates increase by 0.5, your payment will actually increase. So you're getting a house at a discount, but your payment's actually higher than it was previously. And then if it decreased 10% in value, so down to 180, your interest rate increased a full percent, your payment ends up being pretty much the same. I think there's a lot of misinformation in the media. There's a lot of clicks happening in the housing market and the government has literally made it a political talking point. Um, I think that that is misinforming people into what that actually means for their bottom line. So make sure you're getting educated and working with good people that can explain to you what your payments are going to be and what's being projected in terms of housing, right? Because if you're in a great buyer's market right now and you can get a screaming deal on a property and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait, and you, wait you may very well be back in a seller's market before you know it, where you're competing with no conditions, paying way over asking price for that same property. Meanwhile, the difference in the payments wouldn't actually have been that much different. So it just depends on what opportunity zone you're in. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm not in this business to just tell people to buy something. We're not reliant on sales to survive. Our business is very diversified. We do residential, commercial investment. We do new development, agricultural. We own a production company. So really I'm somebody that is not for sale. 
I'm not saying this because I need you to buy something with me. I'm just trying to educate you because it's actually more expensive from a mortgage and housing perspective today than it was back in February, even though the prices are dropping. I've seen multiple breakdowns of that. If you want me to do a video specifically on that topic, jump in the comments and let me know. And this is the last graph I wanted to share to explain to people of how to look at properties from the buyer or the seller's perspective. And this will empower agents. So if you're an agent, give me a shout out in the comments. Let me know as well. And explains the different markets that we're in, right? You could either be in the market or out of the market as a seller. So if you're priced above the comps, you are in this zone. Buyers aren't even really considering your property. If you are priced at or below the comps, you are technically in the market. This goes back to what we were talking about previously about chasing the market. This is the zone that you want to be in and you have to be in good condition. There are three factors when it comes to home sales, price, condition, marketing, I would say maybe a fourth negotiations have a huge impact on your net effective result, but it really comes down to how you present the property for the lowest enough price. Somebody's going to buy your house, right? I don't care what condition it's in. You put it up for a dollar, you'll probably sell it. If you're priced correctly and it shows terribly, people are going to want a discount on the price. But if it's priced amazingly, and if it shows amazingly, then you're in the best position for success. So buyers look at this as an opportunity as well. If a property is being marketed terribly, you walk into it, it smells bad, but the floor plan's amazing. The price is unreal. That could be a potential incredible opportunity for you. It just depends if the property is in or out of the market. So that wraps up the monthly market update. This is going to be dropped in our exclusive newsletter. We drop a whole bunch of off-market properties and information, community shout outs, and we like to connect people with opportunities. So if you're here and you want to get on that newsletter, just jump in the comments. The links should be there or send me an email directly, info at primebrokerage.ca. would love to meet you face-to-face. -face. We can jump on a quick Zoom call. If you're here for the first time, smash that subscription and that notification button. And I'm so happy you came and join us and I'll see you next month. Take care.